Hey guys, welcome to the Canada Puck Podcast, your weekly recap of what's going on in the world of sports, specifically hockey, and even more specifically what's going on in Canada. I'm your co-host, Mick. You can find me on Twitter at Prophet Mick, and I'm joined every episode of my lovely and talented co-host, Brent, on Twitter at Fourth Line Sports. I, uh, I missed the vagina point today. We obviously, we're going to need a new tagline, I think, or a new hand gesture. You've got to be careful with these things, but that, I always thought that we would just touch ourselves as a general introduction like this is who we are as people i, I kind of panicked uh this is one of the first shows where we're like kind of like same size normally you're like a giant head and that's like the little thing but i think i finally figured out how skype worked it only took me five years mm. Mm. We hitting our stride in the seventh season Oh, we've got this we've got this uh sound also i apologize for the first few episodes at least for the youtube feeds uh, i was recording with my microphone my webcam microphone. I should just upgrade that. So like it's good as well as it gives me a better picture. Anyways, that's that's it. Uh, if this is your first show, welcome. It's only going to be better for here. Uh, we did a bit of a tiers list, so a little bit departure from our normal um, affairs last week. But this week, I think we're back to basics. We're going to re- look at headlines. We're going to run through each Canadian team, kind of give you a recap of just how the season's going so far, right? Just touch base, see how they're doing, uh, what, what, what we think they're kind of doing in the future. Uh, we're gonna have some gambling advice, some fantasy advice. Look at some boobs. Mm, give me good times. Can't wait. Best time. Also, I noticed that the tier maker you used. I didn't realize this was an actual program. They liked our uh, your tweet last week. Yes. Uh, except I kind of buggered it up because I like didn't. I like sent it out and there was no link, and then I resent it out and there was a link. But yay, tier maker. We did it. Got, we I did it. I only saw the one that worked. At least I think I did, but I don't know. Yeah, I might have like retweeted it. Anyways, that's is what it is. So there you go. Step in the right direction. Now we just gotta, just gotta start making more content at some point for the rest of the channel. It's lovely times. Just a nonstop feed of me and Mick in our houses. You get to see us in our natural environment. Well, I said like, make it big. I said like something with like cards. Like look at all the cards I found at like my local shoppers. Like, they just have, like, these random packs of, like, 07, 17, 18, like, Opeachy cards. Yeah. I don't think it's Matthews or McDavid years, but, like, in theory, still, there's, like, some rookie cards that are, like, maybe worth more than a dollar that I spent for them. So, in theory, I could create a show where I, like, open cards. Is this just, like, a grab bin? Or is it, like... They're, like, little value packs. So, that's a dollar twenty-five, and you get one to two packs of cards... And they'll just randomly be on this little shelf at the shoppers. So, damn, you have a decent shoppers. Yeah, mine just yells at me to put my shirt on and get out. So, son of a gun, son of a gun. Uh, scrub bathing myself like a gentleman, trying to get clean. We all have a problem. Hey, man, it's raining outside. If I put the shampoo on, it will. It will. I need to rinse. See, I'm already wet. I'm rinsing. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so headlines. We're going to go to the bottom of the standings. I don't see any Canadian teams. I've got the four bot- or five bottom teams queued up. That's pretty exciting. Do you think if I scroll up, a Canadian team is going to pop up, though? Well, it's inevitable. Yeah. I think it will eventually pop up. I would take money on that. Oh, look at that. That's six. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks. Hmm, they're terrible. That's exciting. What's going on with the Vancouver Canucks? At 3-6-2 and two in the season. They have eight points for 11 games. Crushing it. Well, I think we can finally get past the seven-game losing streak to start the season. But outside of watching the sky fall in Vancouver, I've had no genuine interest in following along. I, I enjoyed their misery, and I was having this argument earlier this weekend. I think the whole point of sports fandom is to just enjoy other franchises' misery. So, anyways, there's been less misery to enjoy with the Canucks recently, and I just haven't been. Yeah, that's fair. Ah, I mean, <clears throat> it was a group, a professional group. There are some talented players like we talked about in kind of our season preview show. They needed some guys to step up. No one really has, right? They didn't make the big wholesale changes that we were expecting. Uh, they're just not playing up to the metrics. Slow start to the season. It happens. Uh, I'm not going to press the panic button just yet, right? So, uh, see if this group can kind of figure out what's going on, uh, get on track, find some easy parts of the schedule. Sometimes, too, I- I've noticed early on, road home advantages is, is like a real thing uh teams on home ice 
I think that Arizona Coyotes have won like two to three games on their home ice at this point of the season, right? So, uh, th- that's a different kind of home ice advantage. I guess it's a dis a big disadvantage for the other squad, right? But I, I think it's still early. The sample size is too small to hit like a panic button on this team. But yes, I also enjoy Vancouver suffering. So I've been like, eh, all right, cool. The dozens of fans who showed up for Coyotes games at thirty dollars a ticket. Good for you. That's what this team needed as a, a boost of confidence that they made it. I did see someone was like, I'm going to sign up for, I'm just going to apply for ASU, pay like the $100 in tuition, and then just get season tickets uh, for like the $25 fan, like student section. And she's like, and they're like, I'll pay like 500 bucks and have like season tickets to the Coyotes this year. And I was like, that's a good idea. Yeah, there's, it's 5,000 seats. There's not a bad seat in the house. No. I, I did, I do wonder though, and like maybe it's foreshadowing, and I don't know if I want to get to it just yet. Actually, we're we're talking about it. Let's bring it up. Why is Connor McDavid practicing at the Arizona Coyotes home arena in that commercial with Wayne Gretzky? I didn't even pick up on that. Just saying, like maybe maybe McDavid to Arizona. Start that rumor. This is. All right, we're going to put our tinfoil hats on here. Both Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid are going to become free agents. They have the cap room, and they're saving money right now by not having a real arena. So it's it's actually kind of smart. Wow. $20 million each. you got to come play in Arizona. Easy. Uh, 25 cups in a row. Let's go. Let's go. It's funny. It, it was a dumb joke I made on the internet. No one picked up on it. You'll see it. It's like a Bet MGM commercial. Wayne Gretzky's in it. I think cause that's the one where I haven't paid attention to it. Generally, I'm very dismissive of yeah. bet, betting commercials. Like, I'll see. It's very easy to pick up on a betting commercial. I'm like, no, I'm not paying attention. To it You'll I'm watch sure. it and chuckle. You'll be like, mm, I see what you did there. All right, that's funny. Huh. All right. Uh, let's scroll up one and stop talking about the Arizona. Oh, man, we got a shit segment today. We talked about the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> And McDavid and Matthew. So, good job. Uh, Ottawa Senators at 26. Ha! My bold prediction for the start of the year was they were going to be 3-7. and seven. At 4-6, and six, I'm going to chalk that one up as like... I'm going to give up myself a win on that one. I thought they'd have a bit of a slow start. They are having a slow start. They are having a slow start in terms of output, but their production metrics have been pretty steady. Uh, more on that later, but... I've been really impressed with the Ottawa Senators' ability to create chances with, like, the team that they have. And they're not even at full health right now, because I think Connor Brown is still out. Anyways, all of that is the, the foreplay to the big issue with the Senators this week, and that is the Ottawa Senators are officially for sale with the contingency that it has to stay in Ottawa. So, Mick. Do you have 50 bucks to chip in with me? I'm sure that gets us at least like a, maybe one tenth. Like, it's got to be close to one tenth. This franchise isn't worth much. Should we own the Ottawa Senators? If I have to, I guess. I can cash in some RSPs. Let's get it done. Let's go. Uh, well, I don't even think we need that because I figured the $50 is really more of just like a goodwill gesture. All we have to do is woo. Eugene Melnick's either daughters or granddaughters. Mm. I don't know. So, hundred bucks, well, plus plane ticket. But maybe we could, maybe WestJet will sponsor a flight out out to Ottawa for us. We go to Ottawa. We woo the Melnicks. They're like, you know what? We've listened to the seven seasons of podcast and we like you. So the ones that we can hear, we really like you. <laughs> the dowry of taking on a Melnick daughter is the Ottawa Senators franchise. That's what I'm really hoping for. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. It's... I don't know. I'm Sometimes I'm saddened by news and stories like this, right? When you think of other things, the... Like, the Washington Commanders, so if an NFL team is going to be for sale, I've heard rumors there's one of the basketball teams is for sale right now, too. Like, uh, one of the groups is trying to be sold. And the Senators... And what do you think the price tags on those three sales are going to be? Because one is not going to look like the other two. 
And it just kind of shows the disparity of this league. Now, this is also the same league that plays in a 5,000-person arena and is perfectly happy with it. So maybe you get what you you pay for with Gary Bettman. You sure do. It's worth uh, – you got everything you could. You, you summed it up perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good offensive production, like I was saying. Uh, defensively, goaltending-wise – I don't think the Senators are there yet, but we knew that coming in, right? We knew that up front they were kind of loaded. Uh, they'll be kind of frisky. They'll be fun to play. Uh, go from there. Yeah, let's go keep scrolling up, see what happens. Oh, look at that. We have to get to 23, and we see the Calgary Flames. The all or nothing, this is their time. Stanley Cup in Calgary. Parade's already planned, but at 5-4, and four, you only have 10 points. That's only two points more than Vancouver sucks yeah that does suck something very unbecoming of a, a calgary flame squad sorry i should say a daryl sutter led for calgary flame squad i think they blew a two goal lead in the third period against was it seattle earlier in the week or was it nashville uh no nashville they had like five shots on goal it was 4-1 they didn't even get into the offensive zone so right so i don't know maybe maybe there's a feeling out point with uh feeling out period with the new squad people learning the ropes people kind of learning responsibilities in a new system but i'm gonna hazard a guess that maybe some of these people maybe some of these players aren't good fits for daryl sutter's sim, uh, system because overall kind of unimpressive yeah yeah i i don't know i don't know but this guy is super huge on this calgary squad huber has been struggling and there's your 10 million dollar man in his 30s, we kind of talked about this before, right? I Again, early, I don't think the sky is falling. But I don't know if... This team has always had magic. Uh, the Gaudreau era of the Calgary Flames. So since I've lived in the city for probably about eight years or something like that. Don't exactly quote me on how long Gaudreau played here. It always felt like there was something... Like they really cared. As weird as that says, they would care for spurts and they'd be phenomenal. They'd have five minutes on the ice where they were some of the they played some of the best hockey. They could come from behind. No lead was insurmountable. When they were up, they could hold leads. And I don't know if that magic is there at the moment. They've had some spurts, highs and lows. Uh, so maybe as it levels out, we'll kind of find that. But I don't know if yeah, like Huberto and Kadri is going to kind of provide that same clutch performances that Goudreau and Kachuk brought this squad for the last five seasons or something like that, right? Like, there was one year. All their wins were, like, third-period comebacks. Like, without fail. Every game they were coming back, two to three goals in the third period late. I don't know if they have that right now, and I think... I don't know. We'll see how, the Met, how that plays out, so... Implicit in that is that Kadri is not a leader. He's a complimentary player. Like, when you're when your offense is, is built around a guy who, like, fine, good for Kadri. He played well in Colorado with some of the best players in the world. Now, when all of a sudden that pressure is no longer to be, like, a complimentary player, but to be the one that drives it, it's like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's not going to work out for Kadri in Calgary. And maybe, yeah. Again, maybe this is just one of those big blanketing statements at the outset of the season. And maybe it is just a feeling out period, but Early returns not good. We'll see how it all shakes out. Yeah, they're they're lost to the Kraken the other night, and then crack the and then the Kraken beat Minnesota. Like they beat them like four nothing or something like that the next night. So they're playing some pretty good hockey. So we're not going to just discredit the Kraken and say you know they're a miserable franchise. They they don't know what's going on. I think there is a lot of parity going on in the league. Uh, we are sort of blessed, right? Uh, there's not giant talent discrepancies throughout teams you know fourth liners can actually play hockey at this point they're not just a bunch of scrubs that are kicking around right kind of like the veterans the old boys good and bad good and bad right like you kind of want to see your team beat the quote-unquote bad teams and it is frustrating so i i do understand like i'm not panicking it just it's kind of crappy you know <laughs> but that does listen to open up the door to the philosophical question why are we so blessed uh, praise be, praise be to the good Lord above. Uh, was, you missed it. It was a reference from the the super fans SNL, and it's a Chris Farley quote. And I think I can't remember. He says, "We'll get to that in a minute." That was a nice segue. Okay, it's okay. The moment's gone. Why are we so blessed? What? Well, All we'll right. Get to that. Uh, so we're gonna move up one spot. 
after I drop the ball. But I will not drop the ball on this one because we have to move up two spots. 21 overall. Uh, we get the Montreal Canadiens. Go, abs, go. 5-5-1 five, five, and one through 11 games. Montreal do anything for you? Montreal, we talked about it a little bit last week. St. Louis just kind of elevated. Out. Mm-hmm. He's making the most with the least. Yeah. He brings out the best in the skills players, or like he's he's teaching the skilled players how to be good skilled players, and like they got scraps for the rest of it. So, I mean, overall, they have five more wins than I thought they would through the first eleven games of the season. Yeah. And uh, you know, they'll put up a fight at least. So, if the first eleven games is any indication, they're going to put up. up well, and I wonder, what are we at? One, two, three, four, halfway through headlines. It's early on, too. I kind of feel like everyone cares and tries at this point. Teams haven't given up, right? Teams aren't aren't specifically selling off, right? Like, anything could still happen. Uh, so everyone still has that fighting chance. So until injuries kind of creep in, I think, I don't know. We'll see. Because, I mean, like, look, we're going up to 20. There's Colorado. Uh, they're probably better than the 20th best team in hockey right now. And there's probably some teams will pass. Like, yeah, at 18th, uh, we've got the Chicago Blackhawks. Are they going to be the 18th best team this year? Probably not, but... Is that just drunk Patrick Kane, though? Is fucking... Has Patrick Kane just come untethered in Chicago? He's drinking all the Malort, and he's just like, this is the last of it, Chicago. Enjoy it. Oh, like, I think, I think literally you hit the nail on the head there trying to play to get out of the city, right? So up one spot from 18th, though. We're not even at the halfway point. And we've got our fifth Canadian squad with the Toronto Maple Leafs. 5-4-2. and two. Poor little Toronto Maple Leafs. They're just... Sky's falling. Oh, well, what was that? That was a terrible... Well, actually, not to lift the curtain too much, but you did all right last week on the West Coast trip. I honestly thought that if the Leafs lost on that trip back, on the game back, who were they playing? Philadelphia, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I honestly thought if they lost that game, Kyle Lewis was getting fired. Like, it's just been that type of, of start where you can't do what you've done and make the same mistakes and have the same results and continue to think it's all going to eventually come yeah, yeah. together. But thankfully, they stopped the bleeding. Maybe they built some momentum. But just something like, I just like, if I'm Kyle Dubas, man, like, I'm not sleeping well at night because we're having the same issues we've always had. Uh, so the difference, I, I actually I missed the California trip. I had money against the Leafs. They lost in overtime in one of the fairs, and I think they lost outright on the Saturday. Is that right? I think they both went to OT. Anyways. Did they both go to OT? Uh, anyways, so like they, they, they were unsuccessful on these road trips. The, the the home ice advantage on a road trip, it, it definitely is showing. Uh, these guys are frustrated. They played a pretty good brand of hockey on uh, against the Flyers. They get the Bruins tonight, which is probably a good test. I think the Bruins are one of the better early starts uh, we're seeing right now in the league, so that'll be a good kind of test for them tonight. They, like, they were completely dominant in that Philadelphia game. Philadelphia had a couple odd man rushes, but they never maintained the puck. Toronto maintained, like they were in the offensive zone the entire game. Things just didn't break right. John Tavares finally found the back of the net. And I don't know. We'll see what's going on. Uh, if he's based on the way he was playing towards the end of last year through the playoffs at the start of this season, I I undervalue John Tavares and what he brings to this league. And I think that that Corey Perry hits from the playoffs a couple of years ago really fucked him up. Uh, and he's been struggling to get back to his feet. If he's back to the John Tavares of what we've seen in years past, right? And he kind of regains his form to the most part. This squad could go to a different level, right? Uh, and we, some, like People don't even talk about John Tavares. He might be the best player on at least 10 teams in the league, right? Uh, if he went somewhere, like if he had a choice to go anywhere in the world, like he's probably walking in and being the best player, and he's the third or fourth best player on this Toronto Maple Leaf squad, right? So a guy like that stepping up, your captain, hey, things will be all right. It's a long season. I agree with all of that. John Tavares is super underrated, and the offense continues to buzz. But the downfall this season and uh, has been the case for in all the playoff runs is, is goaltending. Like, goaltending continues to cost mm-hmm. the Leafs. So, I don't know. Like I said, there's plenty of time left in the season. There's no need, need to press the panic button yet. But, if 
goaltending continues to be an issue, like at what point do you draw the line and just say, listen, Kyle Dubas doesn't value goaltending, and that's obviously something you need to win in this league. A hundred percent. And I mean, like there are there are moves to be made, right? Like in theory, d- does it the like the Blue Jackets off the top of my head? Don't they have like a Merzel Lankin and a Corpusalo? They have some decent goaltending. That's probably a step up from at least what the Leafs are getting right now. So bring them in. Use some. I, I don't need to do the Leafs. Also, I hate Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Like they are some of the worst sports fans in the entire world. They're up there with Yankees fans, the Red Sox fans, Patriots fans. They are just a bunch of whining shit faces. There was some comic book looking motherfucker this week who was did some video towards Kyle Dubas's grandmother about how Kyle Dubas screwed this team over because he didn't sign Austin, Mitch, and John Tavares to $4 million contracts, and that's what he would have done. That's what they should have done, and he set this franchise back 100 years as a result. I didn't get past There's like a four-minute video of this fat motherfucker doing this, and I was like, shut, like, what world do you live in? Like, why is this a thing? They're the most obnoxious group. I kind of enjoy their suffering. It breaks my heart inside, but I also like to think I'm not... Like, I'm logical and I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Whereas lots of Leafs fans are just some of the dumbest people I've ever met in my entire life, so. This is how we this is how we grow the brand. We invite some of these fucking lunatics to, like, create content. Hmm. And then we can be the voice of reason where people are like, well, at least these two guys aren't dicks. 100%, yeah. 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 Marketing strategy, 101. Cool, all right. So if there's any Leafs fans you want to come and make a rant, have at it. I'll give you the passwords. You, you knock yourself out, buddy. Knock yourself out. Um, what is that called? Am I a self-loathing Leafs fan? No, because I don't hate myself. You're, yeah, a fan-loathing Leafs fan? Something? Uh, fan-loathing Leafs apologist? Maybe? There you go. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're moving up to 13th. Uh, Florida Panthers, they lost in Arizona to the Coyotes this week. What is going on? What is happening in this league? This is just ludicrous. Uh, up to 11th, we get the Winnipeg Jets playing a pretty good brand of hockey. Uh, looks like they've kind of figured stuff out. Hellebuck's playing well. Forwards are, you know, hitting their at least potential, their averages for the most part. And good Jets. This is what what I've recognized about the Jeffs, Jeffs. The Jets is that they are overachieving relative to last year. But under or sorry overachieving relative to their advanced metrics but it's really just balancing out with last year because they underachieved a little bit so i don't know hockey's a funny game sometimes you can just like have all the bounces it's so chaotic i've said this before hockey's the most chaotic game and sometimes it's just bad bounces sometimes it's like bad shooting percentage sometimes it's bad goal pain. a whole bunch of stuff goes mm-hmm. into it sometimes it's fucking egregious calls anyways these things balance themselves out, out over time, and, and the Jets are just on the other side of that equation right now, where it's like they've maintained, um, you know, reasonable production, but they are very much overachieving. Mm-hmm. Uh, but relative to last year's stats, it should have been expected. So. Yeah, there you go. And I would, based on on games, hockey might be the highest variance luck and chance-based games. So the fact that people do get up in arms over wins and losses, sometimes I'm like, I, I, I don't know what you, what, what, what do you want? Like this team had offensive zone presence for, you know, 50, 60% of the game and they lost by five goals. How does that happen? It, it, it's just them's the breaks, right? So uh, I'm glad the Jets are, are playing well, like we said. Uh, we haven't seen any big step-ups, right? I don't hear any Helona uh, MVP chance yet, but it's coming. It's coming, Jets Nation. So, uh, the Rangers, I like them. Oh, the Seattle Kraken, look at that. They have 14 points through 12 games. They're ninth. So, let's go Seattle playoffs. Oh, and the Buffalo Sabres are right above them. Kind of feel like some things are changing. So, uh, up to seventh. Is that our last Canadian squad? That is the last Canadian squad. All right. So, at number seven, there you go. 7-4 uh, for the Edmonton Oilers. Tops, almost tops to the league. Man, Vegas and like the Bruins are just killing it right now. Hmm. That's what we want. Nice things for Jack Eichel. Speaking of Jack Eichel, the guy that was drafted before Jack Eichel, Connor McDavid. Uh, did I see somewhere that he's going for his 25th point of the season already? Yeah, I believe so. 
And what's been, I guess, flying under the radar is that maybe it hasn't been flying under the radar, but something that's also worth noting, he also leads the league in goal scoring. And I feel like all the best players, it's like a rites of passage. You get you get the Rocket Rock Richard Trophy once. That's it. Like Sidney Crosby had it once. Patrick Kane, I think, only had it once. Um, and I think this is just Connor McDavid's chance to have it once. Because mm. they're not like... They're not natural goal scorers. Maybe, maybe Patrick Kane didn't have it, but um, it just feels like the, the guy's got to fill out his shelf. So maybe this is the year where he just earns his, his keep as a goal scorer. But that top line, I shouldn't say the top line, the power play unit is just fucking unstoppable. The way that they move the puck. Seemingly, they're going to score on, yeah, just about every power play. Uh, Crosby had it twice. No Patrick Kane, Stamkos twice, Pasternak, two Matthews, and then all the wretches of Betchkin. All right. Well, we finally have the handsome guy who corrects us mid-show. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. What's his name? M- M- Maurice or something like that? Mother. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Uh, I- I've said it all last year. Yes, Matthews won the MVP, won the heart. But I said, I was like, he's probably the second best player in the world. Like, Connor McDavid is by far the greatest player in hockey right now. He's still the greatest player. Uh, it's going to get you far in life, right? Uh, he's got a pretty good squad around him this year. Uh, let's go, right? Let's go long playoff run for the Oilers. Uh, are they going to take a step? Maybe, really. It comes down to health with this squad. Uh, it's kind of set, going to set the ceiling for what this season is, right? So if they're playing well, Connor McDavid goes supernova. For two months in June, that's it. Game over. You can't stop him. You're right. You can't stop him. But the other part of that equation is the exact same thing that's bogging the Leafs down. And Stuart Skinner has looked good at times, but he's also a very young goalie. And, and Jack Campbell just not fitting in early in his. Uh, He'll have moments. He'll have a moment in like late November into December where he looks like he's all world. He looks like he's King Vesna r- risen from the grave or something like that. Some zombie f- monstrosity f- battling it out. And then he'll have moments where you're like, you didn't even go down for that shot. He just stood there and watched it. And he's like, ah, oh, sorry, I got distracted. He's like, I was thinking, right. I was thinking about butterflies and you're like, that's adorable. <laughs> so you said zombie goalie. Do you remember mutant league hockey? Did you ever play that one? No. Okay. So this is homework for next week. All right. You being hot. Basically, there was this goalie that was just like a monster that would just like close his mouth and you could never, ever score on it. But the minute you did, the game was just over. It's like, no, sorry. You beat the monster goalie. You fucking win. Anyways, check it out. I think it was Sega Genesis. It might have yep. been on like Super Nintendo as well. But for the Genesis, I got the wiki page up right now. So cool. Hmm. I was a Genesis kid growing up. That's the only reason I knew that. I didn't get my first Super Nintendo until I was like 30. Cool. You ever play Echo the Dolphin? Wow, that one. I I remember people playing it, but I was like, why would I want to play a game as a fucking dolphin? Nick? But was it good? I've never played it. I have signed up for like the Switch Online for like the N64, and it comes with the Genesis, and I started playing it. It seems interesting. It seems kind of like an underwater... Zelda game, but you're a dolphin? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. I remember like... the case. It's like this it's got like the grid on it. Mm-hmm. It's a dolphin jumping out of the water looking super um Majestic? Yeah, majestic. All right, majestic. Cool. So that ends up headlines. Uh week that was. We'll keep track of it all season for you guys. Uh so in theory, if you do nothing else, I watch hockey. That's the thing I hate too, is when people don't watch hockey and make like I didn't watch the, the California games. Did the Leafs play well? I don't know. They didn't win. But you can also play really well and lose a game. So I'm not going to panic. Watch Connor McDavid. He's the best player in the world. Don't make assumptions and never watch an Oilers game. Fair. Also, I will correct myself. The uh, home leader of the handsome men who are correcting. Leafs lost the first one in in regulation and the second one in OT. Perfect. Cool. All right. Uh, So we're going to go to... FanDuel, my dirty fantasy. We're going to give you guys advice, talk about how sweet we did last week, show you our kind of cool lineups this week. But before 
we got to check out NHL.com's uh, what is daily fantasy picks for Saturday. So they want you to take, you want a goal? Riley Smith for the Vegas Knights of Montreal. Let's go. Uh, John Marino uh, is a defenseman for the Devils, playing Calgary tonight. Uh, Arthur Kuliev, he was a forward for the Kings. They're playing Florida tonight. And Jake DeBrusque, uh, forward for the Bruins against the Leafs. He's going to get you shots on goal, apparently. So there you go. Thanks, NHL.com. Thanks for nothing. Cool. FanDuel. Uh, how'd you do last week on FanDuel? This is this. I feel like every time I win, or like, I guess I did. Every time I win, I'm like, I'm the best DFS player in the world. And then the next week, I'm like, I'm betting all my money. It wasn't all my money, but I was like, I'm going to enter one of the higher paying pools. Didn't work out in my favor. 124.2 points. I finished 1,771st. Of five thousand three hundred and sixty-two, my uh, my Red Wing stack paid off because most of my points came from Billy Huso and Lucas Raymond. Moritz Sider was definitely not worth the investment. Jeff Carter was probably my ultimate undoing, zero points. Hmm. Um, otherwise, it was just yeah. And Nino Niederreiter was a piece of shit too. One shot, one block, three point two points. Other than that, nothing. And Nugent, Nugent Hopkins, six point. I don't know. Tread water. All right. Cool. I put up a 151. Uh, it blew up a little bit there. Uh, high point, guys, for myself. Seth Jones, 24 points. I had Connor McDavid, 31.7 points, just like you expect. And I had the man, the myth, the legend himself, the $5,000 man, Tage Thompson, 46.9 points. This guy that is... Hattie? That was... No, two goals, eight shots, one assist, and a block. For 46.9 points against Chicago. He is now the high man. I think he is the highest salaried player this week in FanDuel. So I got on that roller coaster right before it got fun, apparently. I was just going to toot your horn for your crystal ball skills on that one. Because this week I saw something on TSN about how Tage Thompson is taking over the world. You said that last week before everybody else noticed it. So kudos to you. And there you go. Uh, so upcoming... Did I get Tage Thompson in my lineup? Did I spend? I was like, you know what I want to spend? $12,000 on Tage Thompson. Heck yeah, I do. I didn't do that, though. So I entered a $1 lineup. Uh, we were going to play head-to-head. -head. Uh, we were talking about that before the show. I can create a little pool. And me and Grant can go head-to-head. -head. Pay 10% to FanDuel to keep track of it. I think that works. I had 150 You had 120 I get $0.80. Cents. We'll save $0.20. Cents. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so this week, Grant, uh, what did you uh, what did you get to? What do you have? All right. I'll lead off. So I've been digging the stacking, even though it didn't pay off last week. I, it was definitely the right strategy. I just didn't have all the right pieces. Going back to the well, and we've been tugging them off for the last year and a half or so. The Ottawa Senators, I'm going with an Ottawa Senators stack. Brady Kachuk, uh, Thomas Shabbat, and Cam Talbot team as a whole is looking good but specifically i want to highlight brady kachuk uh who is fifth on the team in expected goals for percentage but uh where does he fall to third last in actual goals for percentage so what that highlights to me is that this guy even though he's been playing well is probably a, a progression candidate to actually see those metrics balance out um we can't say enough about what shabbat does to this team he's kind of an analytics darling moves the puck well, makes a good good first pass, and does it all while starting most of his, his shifts in the um, uh, defensive zone. Oh, no, I guess it's offensive zone. So, and plus the power play with Shabbat, too. I think that he, he factors in well. I've added to around them with Austin Matthews up front. Austin Matthews generally, I'm expecting the Leafs to shine. They kind of got off the schneid. I think that they're going to trend upwards. Austin Matthews, especially with their goals scoring. Austin Matthews is one of those guys we talked about last week who's just way below career norms, and it's just a matter of time. The pendulum has to start swinging. So um, he's with Chandler Stevenson up front, taking on the Montreal Canadiens in Montreal. God bless the Montreal Canadian soul. Souls are uh, not so good at stopping pucks. Uh, but I do like Mike Hoffman on the other side of that to try and um, offset some of the defensive 
uh, inconsistencies. Defensively, I have Eric Chernak, and oh, I've already said Shabbat. Chernak plays first line minutes. Tampa Bay taking on Buffalo. Hmm. He is probably due for a good fantasy performance. And then utility spots, Mikhail Gramlin, Dylan Dubé, kind of both. So Mikhail Gramlin doesn't get enough respect. 10 points through 11 games. First line minutes, power play. Uh, and then the Vancouver's had also some issues stopping the puck. So I figure he's probably a good candidate. And lastly, Dylan Dubé. Every once in a while, this guy just shows up out of nowhere and just has a monster game. Devils are on the... They've been on the road for, I think, a week now, maybe less, a little less than a week. Uh, they had that big comeback win earlier in the week against the Oilers. However, um, maybe Friday or Saturday night, setting up is a bit of a flat spot for them. So uh, Dylan Dubé, low-key, 4,200, probably a guy worth rostering. Yeah, that's uh, the key to FanDuel. So if you're listening and you want just advice, just go through this list. So I'm now uh, scrolling through. I'm at the 6,500 range. The players that are listed at 6,500, I don't think are as good as the players that I have for, say, like 5,000 or less. You know what I mean? So it, it's kind of a matter of I like to go to the, the $5,000 and look around and just find players that are going to perform, right? Uh, there's lots of guys down here that get you lots of money uh, and then play for a couple superstars. Is that what I did today? <sighs> Not really. Not really. Uh, who do I have? Up front, I have the best of the Hughes brothers, Jack Hughes. Second line playing uh, Calgary tonight. Calgary's been letting some goals in. Uh, so we're going to see if that kind of performance continues at $7,400. I have him paired with, speaking of, Elias Lindholm. He was the heart and soul. He was the only reason the Flames won playoff games. Like, he basically single-handedly won them that Dallas series. Uh, Lindholm uh, starts finding some magic at $5,600. He might be the best player. Why is he so low? I realize he doesn't have the point production of, say, like the Kadri, but the difference between fifty six and ninety four hundred dollars for these two players, I don't know. I don't see it. I think a Lindholm, if he gets going, that's how the that's how the Flames have success this year. Let's see if that happens tonight. Uh, Taylor Hall at sixty two hundred dollars against the Leafs tonight. He's been quiet, but he seems like one of those smelly buttholes that's going to score tonight. Mark St- uh, Mark Stone at sixty eight hundred dollars. I wanted a little piece of Vegas. Uh, against Montreal this night. On defense, I got John Klingberg and Noah Hannafin at $5,047 respectively. Uh, the rest of my strategy is basically Anaheim allows a lot of goals and San Jose also allows a lot of goals. So I'm guessing there's lots of scoring there tonight. Why can't Klingberg find an assist? Maybe even a goal tonight. Who knows? Hannafin, I like, I don't know. I like the Flames defense. In fact, at one point I had three Flames defensemen in my lineup. Anderson, Hannafin, and Uyghur. I don't think you can go wrong with those. I'm going to go with Hannafin tonight. Uh, Thomas Hurdle at $5,500 and Ryan Strom. So I want kind of a couple pieces from the top lines. Then Anaheim, San Jose game at fifty or 5500 and 4500 respectively. And when emotionally hedging, I'm putting Linus Allmark and goalie Boston Bruins. We'll see what happens. I feel like the difference, at least one thing that like has helped push me to the right side of of the pools is a goalie win it's just like one of those like x factors that just really amplifies mm-hmm. the metrics i see what you're doing linus allmark though what did he start seven and oh did he lose his last start what did the what happened with the anyways he's operating above what i would expect from linus allmark so there might be some blowback <laughs> oh, oh. I, I will take a minus fifty points if the Leafs win. I'm 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 happy with li- living in that world. So, uh, based on the the struggles that they've had, I'm thinking he's gonna have a lot of goals shots on net, right? Even if he lets in five goals, they might put up sixty shots to get five goals, right? So I'm thinking, in theory, you're gonna get like I'm gonna like inch my way that way. So, all right, well I respect it. Well, and also when you were talking about the Anaheim San Jose series, I got a little. I was like. This is the back end of a home and home series because I remember they played themselves. They played each other earlier in the week. Yeah. This is a weird fucking schedule. They played in San Jose. Both teams played another home game, and now they're back in San Jose. Yeah. Why not just do a home and home series instead of scheduling this like a bunch of fucking nerds? I don't. I don't know. Uh, but I know Vancouver got one of their wins the other night, like eight five against the Ducks, and I was like, oh, everyone just scores on this team. So let's. I see it. Let's. Let's roll with it. I don't know if I have a Tage Thompson performance in this this lineup, but... That's, ex- 
exactly my thoughts too. Well, maybe Austin Matthews. I can see Austin Matthews. Like, yeah, fair I enough. Like the consistency of my lineup. Like if everybody gets like mid teens, we'll be all right. Oh, I didn't even say what I did. I, I got fourth out of my fifty dollar pool for a dollar made four bucks. So I saw a little bit of improvement last week. Everyone else on my team, outside of the guys I told you, got two to four points. So you potentially, if you have a couple big big hitters, like you don't need to kill it. So I'm hoping tonight a little bit of balance. Everybody contributes and uh, gets us back into the money. Well, good luck to you, sir. I hope the strategy pays off. Beep, beep, beep. Cool. Just like my strategy last week and better advice, our gambling segment. Every week we, we take 100 theoretical dollars, gamble it, put it, anything we want. We could do parlays or teasers or other weird betting terms you the general public have probably have no sniffing idea what is going on i don't think we ever, i don't think you can do a hockey teaser i think that's specifically just a football thing yeah yeah i don't know how you could tease a hockey team but it could be fun what i do get a kick out of is alternate spreads so like mm-hmm. sometimes you know if you take an underdog team to win by instead of plus one and a half minus one and a half full shitload of money there yeah I wasn't yeah. that bold this week. Though. That's probably the the equivalent, and they'd have to give anyways, anyways, anyways. Yeah, how'd you do last week? Myself, I said Leafs not playing great hockey. I know the story this week is going to be uh, is 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 fired, is Key fired. What's going to happen? Nothing was going to happen. Nothing was going to happen. It'd be fine. But I did get I'm up two hundred and eighty five dollars on the season. So good job, me. I uh, can't find my list here scribbled on one of these pieces of paper but i think i went two for three okay mm, stupid me let me just see if i can um cue my memory here it's not coming to me i think i went two for three i Maybe get, i'm just fucking so full feel like you had an overtime in calgary edmonton that didn't hit you had i had detroit did i take detroit or no i don't oh no it was chicago i was like chicago hmm and then I was like, because I kicked myself for not taking the over. Maybe I went one for three. Maybe I didn't even win. I don't know. We'll have to go back and listen. It's a mystery. Cool. Uh, you know what's no... Halves. Like halves. Uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, not so much a mystery anymore. Uh, sum up a little bit. Grant will figure that out. Let you know how he's doing. Grant, how many plays do you have today? Because I have two. Uh, I have three. Well, uh, technically four, but you know. Yeah. All right. I'll lead off. Puck just dropped. I got to get it in so it's official. Detroit Red Wings hosting the New York Islanders. Islanders are in the middle of a road trip. Afternoon, or sorry, yeah, morning game for us, but afternoon game for everybody who's actually watching it live. It seems like a bit of a dull spot for the Islanders on the road, having to travel, get up for a game in the afternoon. Detroit's been playing great hockey at home, overall, great hockey in general. So. Plus 110, and it makes sense to me. $30 to win uh, 33 Nice. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to... I'm just going to go back to the well. There are some good games. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of a feel. I've got like a little bit of a pulse. Uh, I can't quite identify what's going on in the hockey game just yet. I think there's also a lot of variance, so potentially hitting some uh, big underdogs, right? I, I don't know if that's a horrific thing. Like, are the Blue Jackets beating the Avalanche in an hour? Probably. Right? I think it's just kind of the world we live in where like weird stuff's going to happen. We're going to see some upsets. The Blackhawks over the Jets. Oh, man, that seems like a uh, a good bet, too. Lots of interesting uh, games on the slate. However, myself, I'm a bit of a simp. I'm going to put $50 on the Boston Bruins at 2.1, uh, so just slightly over 2-1 to one, uh, to dominate the Leafs tonight. I don't know. One team's playing very well. No one's talking about the other one. The sky's falling because, gosh darn, they've lost four games. Are they going to lose a fifth tonight? Potentially. So payout of 105. That's my second play. Or my first play. I don't know what my second play could be. Could be anything. <laughs> could be anything. You're really taking a stance against the Maple Leafs. Really insulating those feelings this week, eh? uh, uh, My, I, I, I had a lump sum of money, and my goal over the NFL season was to like hit quarter marks, like 50%. Or at 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, double up at the end of the season, take that money, buy something nice, keep some money for gambling. I wasn't doing well, but betting against the Maple Leafs have got me to my 50% goal halfway through the NHL season. So, yeah. 
Nice fruit. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Um, all right. I'm letting her rip with the uh, over six and a half in Montreal. I think Vegas likes to score goals. Montreal doesn't like to stop goals. This, um, and they're also on the end of a, a long road trip. They're on the Eastern time zone. They're kind of looking past the Montreal Canadiens, so I could see them letting in a few and, and sending this one over the total. Minus $30 to win twenty eight fifty seven. Cool. Uh, well, tom- tomorrow night, the or afternoon maybe, the Leafs get to play again. So, happened last week. What happens if we just let it ride? I don't think they're coming out of this weekend with two wins. I'm going to get a piece of it. I'm putting $50 on the Hurricanes to win tomorrow night. Eric Kalgren is in net for the Leafs. He sucks. He's terrible. So, I don't know if the odds are going to be in my favor. I don't think it's going to be like a super increase. Like, whatever I got last week, 2.6 with the Ducks. So... I'm going to do that and just hedge myself. There you go. I don't even care if I'm not allowed to do that. That's my play. Bet against the Maple Leafs this weekend. I probably will make some money. So so I was going to bet the Toronto Maple Leafs as a, and Boston Bruins as a game to go to overtime. Then you start talking about the Carolina game tomorrow. I was like, you know what? Second night of back-to-back, if Calgary does start, maybe that game is more probable to go to overtime. So I might just call an audible here. You know what? I am going to call an audible. Let me just swap some stuff around here. I'm probably going to regret it. This is a kid to you switching things last year with the FanDuel lineup, but temp is my kid. My last, sorry, 30 of my last $40 is going to be spent on New Jersey Calgary going overtime. Calgary. Needs they fucking to- love overtime. Like, <laughs> they have an overtime kink. And they sit there and they like they wait for it. They will let you score two empty net goals if they're up because they fucking love overtime. God damn. Three so thirty dollars to win one oh two. Uh, I'm not gonna put it more elegantly than that. So uh, what that does for my parlay, I got ten dollars left parlaying all three of them. It gets me up to ten dollars to win one hundred and seventy. Sick. Six, six, six. So I think we're gonna walk away with some money this weekend. You guys can follow along keep tabs on us now if we're hot ride us if we suck just fade us <laughs> if we're hot ride us if we're suck, then suck us if we Something suck like suck us there you go <laughs> so that's it that wraps up all of our segments oh look at that we're like way under time normally we were hitting specifically an hour uh, we're only at 47 minutes that's okay a little shorter show this week i think as more stories come out and we have more to say and we watch a little bit more hockey because like i'm only still on like maybe my fifth hockey game of the season, right? Which it's been on for a month. It's just... I am actually looking forward to having an excuse because like it's crappy here. Everybody's yeah. gonna be staying inside. It's a good day to bundle up. Maybe like steak pie and oh, maybe that's it. A Guinness pie. Then you have Guinness to just stay warm on a winter day. That's probably what it might be in, in the plans. But before we get there, a can of puck podcast wouldn't be a can of the puck podcast without. Our babe of the week. So, we uh, for those of you who've been following along, we changed the tune of our babe of the week, and that is rather than just pumping porn stars' tires or like Instagram models, we are going back to basics and highlighting some of the best hockey babes that uh, North America has to offer. Maybe even the world. We have. I don't even know. Maybe there's a nice Lithuanian hockey lady who I haven't even crossed paths with yet. Yet, but. Annie Cool is her name, and her Instagram handle, I think it's Kuela. It's K U Kula, maybe K U E H L A. Um, not only is this lady a babe, she also goes to Princeton. So you can rest assured that some nice, lucky gentleman has hit the jackpot with this sugar mama. Annie Cool Quay. Well, whatever you want to call her, she's our babe of the week. Show wing. Show wing. She is adorable. Good job, Annie Cool. Mm, good. So, nice. That, I, as, that was the last of the first three hockey babes that I set my sights on okay. the outset of the season. So I don't even know what next week's going to bring. i got nothing planned. Sweet. Which <laughs> is kind of some fun stuff to look forward to for me. So wait, do some digging there. So cool. So hopefully with that, uh, you guys are feeling prepared. You're caught up with what the week was, 
what the week's going to be for hockey in Canada and I guess the rest of the league. We talked on little things here and there. So cool. Uh, good luck in your bets with your fan duel. Enjoy. Uh, like Grant alluded to, we are already, we went from summer in October to like fall for two days. And now we're in like hardcore winter in Calgary. So yeah, feels like hockey season and is in full swing now that the snow is here. So pretty much. I know I'm like, wait, why is there baseball still on? Could be a big game. Could be a big night tonight. Uh, game six of the World Series. Uh, I was going to say, do you have any horse in the race in the World Series? No, I was going to I was gonna put some money on the Astros because I was hoping that the hate for the Astros would kind of like tip the odds in the for the Phillies. I couldn't find any series prices, and I didn't want to bet individual games. But I would have put money on the Astros at the start of the season. Or it started the series, anyways. I just, I, I don't know how anybody can look at the Astros and think that this is a team that deserves to win. That being said, I know the universe normally makes me my word. So, congratulations to the Houston Astros for on the 2022 World Series champion. There you go. Somehow you're cheating. We don't know yet, but when we figure it out, we're not going to do anything about it. We'll just like boo you a couple times, and then you can win next year. It's great baseball. Yeah cancel the first half of the next season so that uh everybody forgets and then you can just continue on with your lives that's it and that's that 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 sounds like a good product and this league is run better than the nhl fucking arizona god damn it piss me off anyways uh with that we end by saying party on grant party on